October into November, the chills in the air, trying to get the yard work wrapped up. More importantly, make time to get outdoors and enjoy nature's fall beauty. Now for those of you getting ready for the firearms hunting seasons, and those of you who just enjoy target shooting, we visited the Blue Ridge Cherry Valley Rod and Gun Club in Scioto. That's the oldest rod and gun club in the nation. We asked them to give you some tips and pointers on sighting in your rifles and pistols. We think they did a great job, as you'll see right now when we go out in the open. Out in the Open is brought to you by Buck Hill Firearms in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania, the Northeast number one online retailer of firearms, the Pennsylvania Outdoor Writers Association, an organization of professional communicators promoting Pennsylvania's natural resources, conservation, and our hunting and fishing heritage, and by the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice for personal carry. And by the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you'll find the largest retail showroom in Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. Hey folks, welcome to this edition of Out in the Open. I'm Alex Zedock. And I'm Joanne Zedock. And we're coming to you from the Blue Ridge Cherry Valley Rod and Gun Club. Wow. Absolutely. What it's a day. The oldest, it's the oldest continually operating gun club in the United States. Oh my gosh, it's wonderful. There's so many good things going on here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we're <laughs> gonna, we come out here, uh, you know, with our friends out here, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, be sighting in a rifle. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go through the steps that everybody mm -hmm. should take before hunting season, uh, before right. the rifle season, and get out there and, you know, Joanne, people spend a lot of money on hunting, travel, boots, <laughs> You yes. know, clothes that don't smell, clothes that do smell, <laughs> smells, you know, all kinds of things. <laughs> but you need to keep the lens on your, on your scopes clean. You need to keep your eyes clean. If you, and you shoot that target. And if you keep missing it, get your eyes checked. Because yeah. <laughs> sometimes there's another thing there, you know? Come on. Absolutely. You know, you got to start there. And don't forget, wear eye protection when you're doing this. Absolutely. And there are a couple of little things, the tips and hints that will help you. Uh, why spend all that money and go out there and miss your deer because your scope was off or something, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, no. If you're going to get it fixed, now's the time to get it fixed or scope mounted or whatever. But uh, we're going to but, we're going to do that with our friends out here. And uh, and sighting in is really a good thing to do because you know you oh no I've been hunting I do this for years but sometimes you need to think just about the know. change absolutely and so you need to do that and yep. also the, the time of day and everything because it does make a difference the light around you the beautiful colors <laughs> all of that yes and don't forget if you're going to go out and use one of the ranges on the, the state game lands or something like that you either have to have a permit or you have to have your uh, hunting license with you right. uh, to use the range so we're going to step over right over to the range there i think they're getting set up and uh, we're going to sight in some rifles for you so don't go away we'll be right back Buck Hill Firearms, home of the $10 transfer, located at 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania. You never have to make an appointment. We're open 10 a.m. till 6 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Buck Hill Firearms is a full-service gun shop with on-site gunsmithing. Buck Hill Firearms NRA certified instructors are here to help you choose a gun that's right for you. Buck Hill Firearms, 916 Route 390 in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania, right next to the Mountain Home Diner. Check out the website at buckhillfirearms.com. Are you interested in becoming an outdoor communicator, writer, photographer, podcaster, or even YouTuber? Here's some advice from some of Pennsylvania's top communicators. Or deer hunting or birding or whatever. I think if, if you're passionate about it, it'll show in your writing. So that would be my number one point. Good advice. Similarly, be sincere and uh, write to a variety of audience. Um, it's great to have your passions, and that definitely comes through in your writing every time. 
readers who know the sport and know you're faking it will see through it. Um, defer to the expert when you don't know, when you aren't the expert in it. Always pull in those great contacts, make relationships, always be handing out business cards because the connection and the networking that you have, those opportunities here at conference and out in the real world um, are going to pay off because you never know when you need to make a phone call to get some insight to work into an article. What, what they've said are the first things that I thought of, but I'll, I'll add to this. Um, uh, I've got a shelf of books at home just on writing, period. William Zinzer has written a classic called On Writing Well. He's written another one that fewer people know of called Writing to Learn. It's amazing how much you learn when you've got to investigate a subject. Um, people say write what you know. Maybe that's a good starting place, but you can always learn something more when you're writing. I, I often learn more. I come away after writing something, knowing more about it than I did starting out. So write, write what you're passionate about, but also write to learn. The fact that all four of us were going to mention the passion thing, that, that, must, that must really resonate. But in addition to that, I would say it's nice to be the smartest in the room. But you want to be the hardest worker. I think that's far more important. Be the hardest worker in the room. Don't miss deadlines. To translate a vision into reality is true innovation. At Car Arms, we not only manufacture some of the most advanced firearms on the market, we build assurance and reliability through a solid history of quality. We pride ourselves on offering concealable, performance-driven firearm systems that exceed expectations time and time again. Car Arms, American ingenuity at its finest. Hi, my name is James Miola. I'm the current president of Blue Ridge Cherry Valley Rod and Gun Club here in Scioto, Pennsylvania, the oldest continuously operating gun club in the United States. Today we're going to be covering the subject of sighting in your uh, rifle for hunting season, uh, possibly a handgun. We have a couple of little club announcements here. Uh, we'd like to invite you all to come down a uh, day after Thanksgiving, that Friday after Thanksgiving. We're going to open the club for uh, you to come down and sight in your hunting rifles. We'll have uh, some safety officers on site and some people to help you out with that. We're going to uh, let you come down and use our facilities for the day. So check out our website, brcvrodgun.org, and uh, get directions off there. We'll look forward to seeing you. You can come down and sight in your rifles. Keep in mind, if you're going to go out to a uh, public range, to a state-owned range here in Pennsylvania, you will be required to have a hunting license or a permit to sight in your guns. Also, keep in mind if you're sighting in your own equipment to maintain your safety issues. Make sure you have eye and hearing protection. Rifles are very loud and you want to make sure you protect your eyes and your ears while you're doing it. Okay, I'm going to uh, throw the show over to Nick DiMaria. He's our Chief Range Safety Officer here at the club. He's going to give you some uh, pointers on how to uh, sight in your rifle for hunting season, whether you have iron sights or a scope. And uh, take it away, Nick. Hi, folks. My name is Nick DeMarie. I'm Chief Range Safety Officer here at Blue Ridge Cherry Valley Rod and Gun, Scioto, Pennsylvania. The oldest continuously operating gun club in the nation. We're a 100% NRA member club. We're glad to be here with you today. Uh, okay, it's getting to be that time of year, right folks? Uh, bow hunting season is going on right now. Soon it'll be rifle and that's what we're here today to talk to you about. Um, we're going to sight in some rifles. We're going to get you on target and get you out in the field and hopefully uh, bag you a trophy. Uh, I see a lot of stuff in front of me here, and it's, uh, let's call it tools of the trade. It's uh, really what's necessary to prepare you for the field, uh, get you out there, um, scoring some targets, what type of ammunition you're going to use, the optics you're going to use to get on target, um, some of the cleaning stuff. Yeah, you do have to clean them, and uh, we have to get them on a bench rest. So the first thing you're going to want to do is gather all your equipment. If you don't have it, come down to the range. Uh, we can arrange for you guys uh, to shoot some of our rifles. Um, you know, on our uh, guest visitor days. Um, if you are interested, um, we teach Hunter Red here at the course. One of our instructors teaches it. Um, but let's get you started in the right direction, okay? So, here's the tools. First things first, uh, what rifle are we going to use? You have to decide on uh, which rifle you're going to be chambering. Um, I like to hunt deer uh, with a 243 Winchester round. So I have my uh, ammunition right here. These are hand loads. Um, I like to hand load myself, but again, they, they sell some great over-the-counter stuff. Um, there's some really prime ammo out there. It, it's costly, mind you, especially now under certain conditions, uh, what's going on. But um, 
I like to use a 243 for deer. If I'm going for something um, a little bit thicker, let's say, um, a hardier game, I like 7mm Remington Magnum. And again, these are hand loads. It's, it's a, a bigger round, as you can tell. Um, so, we got to fine tune, right? We have to find out if we're going to safely take that animal. So, we're going to get out to the range. Um, we're going to have a bench rest. You want to sight your rifle in on a bench rest. When you get out in the field, slings are helpful, right? The sling is your friend. So, properly use the, string, the uh, sling when you're in the field. But for bench rest, uh, listen, you can buy something very cheap and inexpensive, or you can buy something uh, that breaks the bank. It's, it's really up to you. Um, sandbags. 40, 50 bucks. These are very effective. Um, if you like a Coldwell sells a great rest, uh, a bench rest, uh, the lead sled. There's a lot of different products out there. Just make your own choices, obviously. You go to the range, you're sighting in, you need ears, eyes and ears, okay? These are electronic hearing. Some folks don't really want to wear these out in the woods. I could understand. You can certainly wear these. Hardly seen, but they will protect you when that shot goes off. As much as we like to think that we're not damaging our hearing when that shot goes off because we're so excited to take in the game, uh, can cause some damage, okay? Um, spotting scopes. We're at the range. We have it on our rifle on our bench rest. We're going to sight in 50 yards, take a few shots. We're going to sight in 100 yards, take a few shots. Anything longer than that um, with the rounds that we're using, and really any, any deer round in Pennsylvania um, should be sufficient to get you out to a couple of hundred yards. It's very odd that you're going to see game out here where you're going to take a shot longer than that. Uh, be an ethical hunter. Um, you want to hit the animal in the right spot, obviously. So that's why we're here. So our rifle's on our bench rest. Um, we're looking through our scope or our iron, or our iron sights. Um, we have our tools of the trade here, right? This is going to adjust scopes. It can adjust iron sights. You bring your screwdrivers with you, okay? We've put a couple of rounds down range in a safe manner with our eyes and our ears. You want to see how far the actual target is, whether you're on the range or in the field, okay? This will tell you exactly how far your target is. 50 yards, 100 yards, 150. You go down to the very specifics. Everybody needs a good pair of binoculars, um, especially if you are using iron sights. You're not going to have a scope handy. I understand. If you don't have a spotting scope, you don't have a pair of binoculars, uh, you're in the field and you're using an iron sight, please be ethical. Take a shot from a short distance. Okay, we don't want to wound uh, the animal. Um, here's another useful tool. I like this thing. It's called Sight Light. Um, it's a little laser. You can put this down the bore of any 22 caliber to 50 caliber rifle and it will emit a laser and put it on target and uh, comes with all adjustments. Uh, it's very handy. You can sight in any number of rifles with this, whether it's a, a, a scoped rifle or obviously an iron sight rifle. Um, maybe a hundred bucks. So take a look at that. Iron sights. Use a, a trusty old deer rifle. It's a 7mm Remington Magnum. It'll take anything in North America. You don't need something uh, so savage for uh, Pennsylvania deer, um, as we saw the 243 Winchester before, but a great round nonetheless. Chamber's empty. Anytime you're making adjustments to your scope, whether uh, or your iron sights, you want to make sure that the chamber is clear. And I can verify this is. Okay. So we have our rear sight. We have our front sight. Now, in this particular rifle, the front sight is not adjustable. Uh, it does have a tiny bead on it. Okay. It's nothing optical or anything like that. Um, before I take it in the field, night before, I'll put a little bead of paint on there, make it a little bit easier to see. Um, but that one is set. Set it and forget it. Then your rear sight, okay, this is obviously adjustable. So again, you put it on your bench rest, uh, you look through your optics, you take a few shots, see where you hit, um, and make your adjustments accordingly. This rear sight is adjustable for both windage and elevation. Okay, there's two little set screws here. You loosen the screws. This always comes in handy, folks. Throw it in your range bag. Loosen the screws. Um, there are little marks on this scope here, on this uh, rear sight. Um, make your adjustments accordingly. You always move it in the direction that you want the round to hit. So if I'm shooting low, I want to move that sight, loosen both screws. I want to move that rear sight upwards in the direction where I want the round to hit. And obviously the inverse if I'm shooting too high. Okay. You get a clear sight picture. Line up your front sight. Rear sight, flush three across, focus on that front sight. 
Take a breath, pull the trigger, see where you hit, make your adjustments accordingly. Here's another option for you, especially if you're shooting with iron sights and you're trying to sight in your rifle at 50 or 100 yards. Um, that's pretty easily seen, even with the naked eye. And of course, as we get older, it gets more difficult, but uh, for you youngsters out there, this is ideal. Um, but a good pair of binoculars can pick this up right away. So these are reactive targets. What we have here is on a tripod. We have a .243 Winchester rifle. Uh, chambered, uh, it's a good deer round. Doesn't have to be the only deer round you use, but it's one of several that are very popular. Um, so, let's get started here. Do you have a scope rifle? Do you have an iron sight rifle? As you can see, we have a scope rifle here. Uh, this is a uh, Thompson rifle with a Nikon scope. And there's a number of different things we're going to do, but before you get started, make sure, make sure you're in a safe direction. Okay, there's no ammo anywhere here if you're working on the rifle itself and the scope. Okay, anytime you make scope adjustments, you want to open that bolt. You want to make sure that the chamber is clear and there's no ammo in the rifle, even in the field. If you're making any scope adjustments, if you're on an animal, obviously it's a different story, but if you're not, you want to make sure it's clear. So, what do we do? First thing we do is we need to take a shot on target. As Jim said, if you're at the state ranges, make sure you get the permit and get out there. But again, we're welcoming, welcoming everybody here day after Thanksgiving. Come in, sight your rifles, it's open to the public. We'll have NRA instructors, uh, range safety officers here to help assist you. Um, if you don't have a rifle, we'll have a couple here for you that you can use. Um, maybe learn the practice and next year take it upon yourself and get out into the field. We're here to help. That being said, let's look at our scope. We've taken a shot. What do we do now? Okay, let's look at the scope. This is the body of the rifle scope. Okay, these caps here, obviously, like most cameramen, don't leave your caps on. Alex, you've done that before, haven't you? Um, Let's take those off, get a better look at this thing here, okay? Now, we're looking through the rear optic, okay? What are we looking at? We're seeing what's called a reticle. A reticle is what appears on the front glass of the rifle scope. There are seven, several different variations of it. Some get very particular, uh, some are quite basic. The older scopes seem to be quite basic. Uh, nowadays, you can find rifle scopes with reticles that'll sight you out to a thousand yards. So here in Pennsylvania, you're not going to come across that too much, where you're going to take an animal at such lengths. But maybe you're going out west. Um, rifle scopes can be very cheap and inexpensive, uh, or they can run the gamut and go to thousands upon thousands of dollars. Night vision, uh, thermal imaging. Um, if you have the money and you want to buy it, it's available. Okay. So we're looking through our scope, we've taken a shot, I'm looking at the reticle, and the reticles are the crosshairs that you see on the front, okay? And again, there could be a lot going on there, so pay, pay close attention, and if you have any information um, that you're seeking, go to the distributor, okay? Any company out there that makes rifle scopes, same as rifles, if you don't have the warranty and the manual for it, write them, they'll get it to you, okay? These things can be very particular. We've taken a shot, I'm off to the left at a 100-yard target. What do I do now? I need to adjust. Again, these are called turrets. Unscrew the cap. Now, we've gone high. That's known as elevation. So we're going to get to windage, which is left to right in a second. But we're going to adjust the elevation first. Now, I'm shooting a little bit high, about an inch and a half high at 100 yards with a .243 Winchester. So I'm going to look through my scope. I have it set at four power, okay? This scope goes all the way up to 16 power. I'm gonna leave it at four power. I'm gonna look through, I'm on target. I'm going to adjust, okay? MOA means movement of angle. Now this particular rifle scope moves a quarter click. Every quarter click, 12 clicks equals one inch. So I'm gonna turn and I'm going to adjust. I'm going to get on target and I'm going to take a second shot while sighting in my rifle. Okay, after that adjustment, 
for elevation, I've taken a shot and I've adjusted my scope, the top turret here, to move the point of aim downward. And it was successful. But now we're going to have to adjust the windage, which is left to right. And it's going to be that turret right there that I'm going to adjust. And according to the MOA, which is, again is movement of angle, this is a quarter turn. It's four turns for MOA on this particular scope. They're all different, so don't hold me to it. Check your owner's manual. Um, there's some great information at the manufacturer's uh, websites um, as well. So take a look. This particular one, I'm shooting a little bit lower now, thanks to my elevation adjustment. Um, but we're a little bit off to the left. So I'm gonna make an adjustment now on windage, which is left to right. Here on this turret, I'm gonna move. It's about three quarters of an inch off, so I'm gonna give it an MOA in about six clicks. Okay, I'm ready to take my third sighting and shot. Hopefully this one will be close to the bullseye. Let's see. Okay, I've made all my adjustments on my scope and it seems like I'm in line. Um, I have a nice grouping. I put a couple extra down range just to make sure, which is always nice. Um, it looks like I have a good group. Um, I'm within an inch at 100 yards with a 243 Winchester uh, round. Here in Pennsylvania, uh, that'll do you justice. You'll get, uh, you'll get your deer, hopefully, um, or any other animal. Hopefully, uh, you got an elk permit this year. I didn't. Um, that'll get you on target. Uh, you'll be accurate out to a couple of hundred yards, uh, which is more than sufficient, again, in the Pennsylvania wilds. Um, so I wish you the best of luck and uh, get out in the field. Uh, be out in the open. Hello. I'm Mike Brigadier. I'm the vice president here at Blue Ridge Cherry Valley Rod and Gun Club the oldest operating gun club in the United States. And talk about handgun hunting a little bit or sighting your handgun for hunting. It's similar to a rifle. You have either iron sight units or you can get scopes. Usually they're lower powered, about two times magnification maybe. Uh, and you shoot at shorter distances. Best thing with a handgun is to shoot at a distance that you're comfortable hitting something with and sight for that typically 25 yards or maybe 50 yards. Uh, most popular handguns for bigger game like deer will be either a 357 Magnum such as this or a 44 Magnum is also common. Now, one of our members here took a deer a couple of years ago. He used a two power scope. He's an expert shot so he sighted in at 50 yards. There's only about an inch difference in impact from 25 to 50 if you do that and one shot and dropped it just with a jacketed hollow a jacketed soft point bullet and uh, one and done on a deer okay uh, again the sights same thing as on a rifle you move a rear sight left and right right if you want your shots to move right up if you want your shots to move up on the scope the reticle crosshairs same thing as in the uh, rifle you move them up accordingly, left or right, and at shorter distances, typically you have greater amount of adjustment you have to do because <clears throat> that's what the, uh, the calibrations are a little different. Okay. So once you're all set up, practice. Go out, check your sights, again, at 25, at 50, and at 25 again. That will get you right on target. As Jim said, if you're at the state ranges, make sure you get the permit and get out there. But again, we're welcoming, welcoming everybody here day after Thanksgiving. Come in, sight your rifles. It's open to the public. We'll have NRA instructors, uh, range safety officers here to help assist you. Um, if you don't have a rifle, we'll have a couple here for you that you can use. Um, maybe learn the practice and next year take it upon yourself and get out into the field. We're here to help. Out in the Open is brought to you by Buck Hill Firearms in Mountain Home, Pennsylvania, the Northeast number one online retailer of firearms, the Pennsylvania Outdoor Writers Association, an organization of professional communicators promoting Pennsylvania's natural resources, conservation, and our hunting and fishing heritage. And by the Car Firearms Group, the number one choice for personal carry. And by the Tommy Gun Warehouse in Greeley, where you'll find the largest retail showroom in Northeast for all kinds of new and used firearms. 
<laughs> well, Joanne, Blue Ridge Cherry Valley Ride and Gun Club established in 1874. Wow. Can you believe that? Oh, I remember what I did in 1974, <laughs> but I can't remember 1874. <laughs> it's fantastic. You know, they, um, they've been, uh, you know, they're the longest uh, continually operating club, uh, gun club, and they started, I think, about three years after the NRA got started, oh. is all. And they've been in operation ever since and wow. uh, got a great club. They do. I like to, I like it. I've yeah. enjoyed it. We've, I want to go back again. I would like to do some target practice. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, we should go back next time. We go back. Maybe we'll do some shooting because they do have, right. uh, they do have a uh, trap and mm -hmm. they do have some rifle and pistol shooting. Mm -hmm. They've got some indoor shooting. They've got outdoor mm -hmm. shooting. I mean, they, and they got a, uh, you know, they've and just got all kinds of activities. Me. Yes, absolutely. You can <laughs> take that with you, and we can go there and have some fun. What do you think about that? I think it's a good idea. Hey, there's a lot going on, you know, with this COVID thing, and oh. we're trying to keep socially distanced, except for us. We're kind of. Not socially distant. <laughs> we, we try to keep socially distant wherever we go, wear our mask, and we abide by whatever rules and regulations there are. But you know, there's a, you know, it's just it's creating such a problem now. Yep. You know, we usually go to some major outdoor shows. Yes. Like the Shot Show in Las Vegas right. this year is still on, and that's I think that's January 19th to the maybe the 22nd that's in Las I, Vegas. I yeah. thought that's yeah. what I read. Yeah. And we don't go every year, but we were there in Vegas, mm -hmm. and it's a phenomenal show. But they're still planning to go on. The Great American Outdoor Show in Harrisburg is the same kind of situation. I think they're looking to go I, I, on the website. Doesn't say whether they're on or on or off. You know. But we've gone there for years. And, you know. But just, no, we you know we yeah. get some great shows from there. And of course, uh -huh. the National Wild Turkey Federation right. show down in Nashville at the Opryland Hotel right. is a phenomenal yep. show. And we get so much information mm -hmm. there. You know, uh, and that one uh, I, that one's tentative. That one is still kind of scheduled oh. online, but. Um, oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize it was a possibility. Saying maybe it will be, maybe there. it will be virtual, and so <laughs> it depends on how you know. The, it depends on how the COVID thing goes. Exactly. Like yes, you know, and I like Nashville. We've had some good times at Absolutely. the Opry. Absolutely. We've been to some meetings down there. Yep. Really good times. So yeah, and I so hope it's we can a, get to but something. We got so much information to be able to do shows now. You know, we don't have these shows. Right. You know, to go to. So, you know, we've got to dig up some more information <laughs> shows locally. So you know, wherever we can go and travel. But so far. So far, we're doing good. Hey, we're looking to do some more of that so we can bring some more of these shows. I mean, these colors are just phenomenal. Oh, this fall is just you know? beautiful. <laughs> I think it's one of my favorite seasons. Yeah, what did you say earlier when the wind was blowing? It looked like uh, big yellow snowflakes. Exactly. <laughs> Listen, those white snowflakes aren't too far behind. Oh, I know. They're not quite this big, though, fortunately. No, no. Fortunately for you drivers and hunters out there, they're not quite as big as these yellow no, ones. No, not yet. But, you know, with global warming, who knows? You know, it could be warming them up and making them bigger. Oh. Hey, we got some great shows coming up for you, so don't uh, forget to tune us in uh, every week. We've got something new because we're going to be out in the open. Absolutely.